I will assist them. Yes. Yeah. So thanks everyone for joining. I'll start today. Thanks. First one is to check advisor OMM issue. Uh, this is the issue which was observed quite a while back, I think. Uh, cause of this was based on OMM. We had few discussions. I think today is more on the new topic which came out of it, right? So yeah, what are your thoughts? I need to reread. All right. Um, so uh, my basic question was: um, Can't we make it a simple, simple um, operational? alert uh, have a little bit of incident management and really do some kind of manual refinement of the resources uh, that we're going to need um, i think the root cause is if we are um, no, if the platform is killing a pot because out of memory we don't see any any information so we, we are basically losing information therefore it might be clever to really provide as much memory as re required we want to be super fancy about that, have something that is capturing the out of memory kill. I think we can't do that. Um, do we want to uh, invest in monitoring and automation and alerting um, when something breaks? I don't know. It felt from from Maya's comment like it's not happening really often that we got out of memory killed. I I, I don't know about that one, but in in general it fe felt to me or it concluded like yeah let let's have an alarm on it when whenever we get it out of memory killed. Let's review if we need to put a little bit more memory on the problem and if that is um, sufficient as a solution. That very manual hand woven, I got an alert, I'm going to analyze and I'm going to refine resources solution. But maybe, Max, you, you had a little bit deeper look at all that stuff. Um, please um, feel free to add. Well, um, that's mostly what I, what I wrote on the, on the issue. So um, I Pretty sure we can uh, we can capture the the, kin the killer signal. Um, we might though. Uh, I, I'm not sure that, but uh, when I uh, I was looking at the issue, I, I um I did some uh, some research, and apparently you can set uh, a memory limit from uh, from within uh, Python uh, with a resource uh, set limit, and uh, the, I think if you well, if uh, Python as a preter um, requests too uh, too much memory, it, it will throw a, a memory error exception, which uh, can be caught, and um, oh. and maybe uh, about the, the current uh, current run and uh, and um, I don't know what. Uh, we can do with that, mm -hmm. but I don't. I don't think there is another way to to handle the um, that uh, that condition within uh, within Python and the the other ways. So get well um, watching uh, RM uh, error on uh, on the pods. I think it's uh, it's related to the to the metric issue. Uh, so uh, getting uh, getting the exit cards, and uh, that uh, that probably will need to to wait. That uh, the um, the prayer on a keep state metric has been merged, if I'm uh, if I remember correctly. So I don't know when we are we're going to be able to to have that available on our, on our cluster, but uh, that could be could be used, I think. Do we have an idea how often that problem um, um, arises? I mean, I mean, how how many pots do we kill because out of memory? Do we know that? I don't. So 
the the reason why it fails is uh, based on how what kind of stack users are requesting. If it's a stack like which has a which has too many packages in it, then the strides will try to yes. go for those many combinations, and that's what fails it. Uh, PR cage. Um, I remember when we addressed this issue before, uh, we to mitigate it, we made it, we gave warnings when a user would put like for the pip file, they had a star or like catch all kind of category instead of a specific category. Cause that's, I remember when I would do tests and I had a bunch of packages in there and I had stars instead of specific packages, specific versions, that's when it would throw the out of memory error. Mm -hmm. So you're basically saying we could give an advice to to uh, decrease the number of packages we are looking at by having a meaningful version specifier. Yeah, I mean, I thought we added a warning saying you're not using um, like a more mm -hmm. specific version specifier. Mm -hmm. Somewhere in the justifications. So this would be just the workaround, right? That technically we want users to input whatever packages they want, and based on that, we should give them the result. Uh, mm -hmm. So if even if we throw the warning, um, it's still the problem is on our side right, to fix this thing. Uh, any, uh, I remember um, there was uh, some little work done on advisor to make this more performance based, like improve the performance on this aspect. But uh, we should probably invest more time on that part and also look at if this kind of issue happens, maybe there is a, the solution which is shared to provide the resource limit through source code, that could be something valuable. Because if we see that there is a lot of multiple packages, we can dynamically increase this. This is something which we wanted to look into. We were trying to look from Argo side. That's why I mentioned it. We looked into our, from the Argo side to have this dynamically uh, allocate resources. Because some for some packages, it doesn't really need that many CPUs just to resolve if someone is just asking for one package. So similarly, if someone is asking 15 packages in one, then we should improve that. Uh, so two solution would be to first, the one which Max uh, suggested, I think that's plus one from my side, to look into that. And uh, also to improve the performance on advisor, which I think, which is a in general, a bigger, bigger uh, question. But I think the warning is still something which we are doing as a workaround. Um, in general, uh, have a metric on this many pot, uh, no, this many advices get OOM killed. Is that something that we should have so that we can say it's it's happening one time a year, so we don't really care? or it's happening 15 times a day? Or do, do we have that? No, I, I don't think we have that, right? Mm, I'm checking, but I think there is a metric on how many uh, advisors we, we have, failed advisors, but I don't think they specify on what kind of failure they are. No. I think that uh, object of, um, of a metric issue on the uh, exit code. Is uh, I don't remember where exactly. Yeah, we have another issue. Uh, I think we are solving that way. It's in metric exporter. Yeah, and the advantage, another advantage of 
taking this approach of you know doing it from from the code itself instead of from Margo or in addition to is that then is mm, the advice can finish gracefully let's say and and let the requester the user know that something went wrong and in somehow you know produce at least an answer uh, you can say I'm sorry it didn't work and provide the link to further help or something or do something more elaborate maybe like show the partial results if available or something like that but at least for, for the user experience side of it I think it's better okay um who who's going to sort that out a little bit more? I mean, we we have a few uh, suggestions or, or approaches uh, that we could take. Uh, some might be implemented. Some some might be user facing. Some might be just operational. Um, who's going to who's going to take a, a closer look on what we should do? Good. Should we split? And or create, you know, the issue, the original issue is seek observability. I'm thinking for this approach of wrapping things up and, and under set resource limit, maybe we want a stack guidance <laughs> to get to do just this or something mm -hmm. like that. Uh, uh, uh... Uh, I would say we're going to give it uh, to uh, Max and Gage and see what's really happening, right? So if we can give clever advice and in kind of an information to the user, like have a better version specifier, that is something that we should do. That's that's kind of user experience. Uh, Max seems to have had a look at uh, a few of the things um, either on the application slash Python uh, layer on lower level. So if we just need some kind of metric which is saying it's happening x amount of mm, x numbers a day or a week or so and we qualify that as we don't care good um but it feels to me like we we should ha have another thought about what's what what's really valuable alternatives that drive the user forward or that drive the quality of our service forward I don't know if stack guidance is really driving this because it feels like we just configure the environment around an advice creation in a good way. I don't know if, if we really need to look at the advice itself or the, the method we use for advising. I don't know. Sounds good. Uh, at least from our side, I think we will try to make this recurring in both user experience and our stack observability and DevSecOps calls so that this doesn't get missed. I'll try to pull this into the, both the things. Uh, if we are looking into advisor, then I feel like we should bring in the stack guidance. Uh, yes, like thoughts, but that's, let's, I mean, it's all of us only. So we'll try yeah. to move this around. Uh, so I'll just keep this into both the calls uh, so that we can discuss on how we are improving this. Mm -hmm. uh, any other thoughts on this um, before we move forward? Then let's go to the next topic, uh, zero bug policy. We have a issue created on it. Uh, and some discussion. So yeah, any thoughts? Yeah. Um, so um, I think it was in one of the retrospectives where Max uh, brought that uh, idea of zero bug policy up. Um, for me, it's uh, most often very simple. I like that idea. Uh, let's do it. Uh, but obviously, um, that should be something that, uh, A, we uh, decide as a team, 
and B, we should think about how to integrate that one. Um, Max, I think the issue linked that 455 um, is a summary uh, that you gave with a little bit of references and stuff like that. And um, I wonder if we should come up with a few um, conclusions or modifications of our terms and services, uh, terms and condition documents, sorry, um, and just be clear on if we are going for a zero bug policy, how does it influence planning, triaging, and stuff like that? Um, Max, I think you you did that in the in the last comment somehow, right? Yeah, well, that's right. I I think um, well, it it should be integrated in a, in the term and condition, and it should not be as long as uh, as the issue itself. But uh, ultimately, uh, the idea is just uh, uh, at the start of the spring, we decide if mm. it's a bug, that means we, we fix it uh, now. And if we feel that uh, we can, we can, um, uh, well, uh, we can uh, live on uh, with it and not fix it now, it means it's not a bug. So that's mm -hmm. from from uh, from what I I understand it, it's basically a, a, sim a simplification of a, of what a, what a bug is. Mm -hmm. um, I think that 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 uh, refers to your second point, right? We we need to qualify what is really a bug, a bug, right? Um, exactly here on screen now. I don't do that. Why? Why? Why do you think uh, a single product owner should do that? Isn't Isn't it that a matter of the uh, ZIG itself? So, so can't every um, subgroup qualify it as a bug or not? Yeah, absolutely. I. I that's uh, something I, I I stole from one of uh, of a blog I was reading, but. It's not uh, it's not set in stone. I, I think uh, it is that there is a, a someone or a group of people uh, deciding whether we we well we consider that uh, as a bug, and uh, in in some uh, setting it will be a product owner, in other it can be a mm -hmm. six. Uh, mm -hmm. I would um, either go with uh, Zix or, yeah, no, I would I, I would go with uh, Zix. And um, criteria for bug, no bug. What is what is that? Why 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 do we need criteria? Do you think we need, need to make, uh, we need to, so, so one of your comments, Max, uh, was um, things we need to define. What's the criteria for being a bug or not a bug, the, the impact threshold? Um, so you think we should be a little bit more clear about when we're going to put kind bug on something? Yeah, I think, well, yeah. I, I'm not not completely sold on, on that one I'm because uh, 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 in some case uh, I think it can be quite clear uh, what uh, what the impact of a bug uh, is so uh, are we losing money but in our case I'm I'm not sure if we have some something like that which is as uh, that's clear cut. Mm. So, not completely sure. Yeah, some things are easy, right? If it's just broken, it, it is obviously a bug. If there's an API which should deliver something and it's delivering 404 or um, 500, obviously it's a bug. Um, everything that is blocking a service from being delivered is a bug. 
if the service is just too slow, well, hmm. it's not a bug. Yeah, exactly. I would leave it to the criteria of the whoever refines the the or triages the issue um, and trusts that triaging will be you know part of part of the triaging is deciding is it a bug or a feature and is it a meaningful one or not. I, I guess that the real thing we should probably document would be that first part about first we plan bugs so the the in other words i think refining would not change much on based on this zero bug policy except that maybe we want to adjust the priorities rather than you know a bit more but then the real changes in planning and and where we look first at bugs before looking at new functionality. Mm -hmm. like uh, I think also the idea is um, during planning uh, we we don't really look at bugs where where in the planning. I mean um, when we once uh, we have. We judge them uh, as bug there uh, in the planning, and uh, and, the, and then we only have to add uh, whatever is left uh, in uh, in the planning. I think that's also one of the idea that uh, you simplify your planning this way. That, that's what I I understood. Yeah. Um, I never tried uh, to to work in, in that context. So uh, I guess that then, you have a few, right? But if you have a significant number, you have to plan a bit. I think at least initially. Yes. Uh, what about others? Um, how do you feel about um, tackling uh, bugs first? Is that, uh, in general, a misconception? Is it something that, in general, will bring us forward because bug-free is always better than not being bug-free? Or... So uh, my view is uh, there's some kind of bug which will basically stop the whole process, right? So they irrespective of planning grooming anything they will directly fall into that sprint and someone would fix it because without that nothing will work and people will start complaining right so those kinds of bugs are set aside like they, they are done anyway um, they are irrespective of the sprint but there are other bugs which really are on on the side of that they can be planned in a sprint mm -hmm. they can be worked on a sprint Technically, they even if they don't get fixed, they don't really disrupt the whole process. They are on a user side. The user might be facing issues, but it's not not something which without which the user can't function, right? Those are the bugs only which for which we can plan. Uh, so I agree on the, all the points which have been spoken that we should plan them. Uh, yeah. Uh, so I'm in. I'm plus one for giving. Yeah, that's my view. But I think uh, Kevin and Gage might know more. They are working on the user experience side. They they might know how bugs are bothering them much more than me. Um. Yeah. I for bugs specifically with like UI stuff. There's a lot of like little bugs here and there. Like you could say like the margin on this div isn't aligned or it flickers when this happens or it's too slow and it's a bug there's a lot of bugs but they're not necessarily something that needs to be spent time on fixing because it's not breaking the user experience it it'd be, it would mean it would be better if there wasn't a bug I mean, the user experience would go up but not as substantially as a new feature so i see it's like 
is adding a new feature going to increase the user experience more than fixing this bug? But, uh, what you just said is basically um, a misqualification, right? If, uh, if the diff is wrong or if it's flickering or something, um, you could simply turn that uh, bug into a feature request and then but, proceed with the planning, right? Right, but then I, I guess the definition of a bug versus a feature, a, a bug, I would say, is something it's not, it's not supposed to be doing that. Like, no. it's not supposed yes. to flicker, so it's a bug. I didn't design it to flicker. Yes. I guess. So here is an example. You, there is this bug. Uh, I feel this is a bug. Uh, people were complaining that with each type, time they type something, they were getting these prompts, right? This is something substantial. That's a bug. Uh, it's a bug, yeah. right? Like, as soon as you see it, even you feel it. So that's why it's a bug, both from side. So it was in mid sprint. Gage took it, Gage completed it, and we made a release, right? Uh, there is another one. Um, this one. There is a component, uh, Horus, which people are using it. Uh, and but technically, it was not fulfilling its purpose. This is also a bug, but without this, users were able to function. They were not being disrupted. So this went into a sprint cycle, SIG took it, SIG worked on it, and fixed it afterwards, right? So this is something which I feel like these could be split. Like, But there would be few things which uh, uh, so these kind of things, uh, like these have to be feature, right? Like we can't call them a bug if people really can't extract something. So I think the question on what is the criteria is a good question. Like what would be the criteria? How would you define it? Yes, either, either we're gonna do it uh, by um, policy and document a few examples, or we're going to do it by uh, creating a common sense and re and really talk about that stuff. Because um, I think the three examples uh, that you just showed, they, they are pretty good examples, um, especially with the explanation that you gave. Um, they seem to be correctly qualified as being a bug or a feature. And um, uh, there, there's basically no hard part about that. So if we if we just continue planning and implementing all the uh, the, the planned things, um, wouldn't the hard part be where we can't decide if it's really a bug or a feature? Okay. And and do we want to make policies up up front uh, for this situation, or do we want to experience them some when when they really encounter? Yeah, I have. I, I just placed here a link to uh, an issue that I, I that discussion reminded me about this one where it was I opened it originally as a bug, then Gage switched to feature, then we switch it back to bug. But it's a bit, you know, <laughs> that's a good example. <laughs> open for debate, let's say. Um, it's you know you go to. Uh, Cloud Station Ninja slash Kevahead, and there is an outdated website. Is this a a bug or it's a feature request to bring that information up to date? Let's say. Um, I think the the broken links are definitely bugs, but the the outdatedness of the website because it was designed initially that way. Um, updating the website to something more, I guess, new would be a feature, but fixing the links would be a bug, in my opinion. Which is why I thought this uh, issue was kind of confusing, because I kind of included a little bit of both, from my point of view. 
you know, the thing is with the zero vote policy in, my, in place, if this is a bug, this would take priority over other steps. Yeah, but, but the question remains, what will take priority, right? Fixing the 404? Yeah, sure, that will take priority because that is really shedding a bad light on, on us. If there's a broken link, that is something that should not happen nowadays. Uh, the content being outdated, well, yeah, obviously we are lazy people and we don't care about our users and we don't care to present them accurate, up-to-date information. That is, that is definitely a request. Let's improve on that one. That, that is something that we shouldn't do. Spontaneously, I'd say let's split it up in two. One is a bug, one is a feature. Okay. Because one one seems to require just a little bit of time. Fixing four four should be should be easy, trademark and stuff. No? And uh, really keeping the content up to date might be a trickier thing because maybe we have changed stuff so much that we require re-understanding the user experience and re-documenting the user experience. It's not a matter of simply uh, uh, fixing a typo or something. Maybe we're going to do it like that. Um, qualification if bug or a feature is up to the ZIG. If in doubt, bring it back to the uh, tech talk. If it's more urgent than weekly, bring it to the chat and do it on the day. And let, let's talk about that. That gives all of us an, a little bit of opportunity to really learn how to qualify things in a good way. And uh, hopefully it is kind of a common sense. So planning should be easy, right? We should not discuss during planning. No, 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 this is not a bug, it's a feature. What do you, what do you guys uh, think? Is it good? At least we can practice a little bit uh, doing it like that. Sounds good to me. Anyone else? Sounds good to me too. Awesome. Uh, if nothing else, let's move to the next one. We don't have much time. Uh, ODH CNBI feature, are you covering? Uh, yeah, just um, because there's this recurring topic here. Um, um, I was hoping to have Microsoft be an alternative for a local development environment uh, where we need, you know, some of the pipelines require or rely on, on OpenShift resources like image streams. I finally made it work yesterday, the MicroShift deployment and all that stuff and CMBI deployed there. And that made me realize that a month, a few weeks ago, MicroShift removed the OpenShift API uh, component. So there are no image streams in MicroShift anymore. Um, so yeah, that's the update. Um, there is no, MicroShift is not going to help uh, as it is right now. Um, yes. I took a quick look at OpenShift Local, which is very heavyweight. And I was hoping that it would be less heavyweight but it isn't I'm... and i'm i'm still super pretty sure that these um is it open shift local nowadays or these uh code ready container stuff I, I i can't remember which is the newer name for yeah the new name is open shift local ah okay good uh, i'm i'm pretty sure it will come across your local network um setup and and screw it up i I really had a hard time every time uh, installing it on my laptop. Um, should we go ahead and just deploy to the uh, open um, open climate cluster? What is it called? Is it open climate? Yes. OS climate. OS climate, climate. right. Uh, there was an S missing, sorry. Um, sh shall we just go ahead and uh, deploy to an open OS climate <laughs> cluster and just test integration over there? Or is that is that too slow for us? Well, the cluster is actually good, but maybe we we should create maybe uh, 
a new namespace namespace for development and keep the the current one is managed by Argo and it's, it's slow for development. So maybe we can request a new namespace and do the tests there. Mm, unsure. Let's let's request an environment for integration tests. So for for a staging environment. Because That's what we we could all uh, and have that managed by Argo CD. We could always go ahead and stop the Argo CD synchronization, if I'm not wrong, and use OS, uh, OC, whatever, and fiddle around in the stage environment. And if we are unhappy with it, we're going to re-enable Argo CD again and we're going to fix stuff. Or do doesn't doesn't that work out? Actually, now that I think about it again, yeah, we cannot have two because some of the things that we are deploying are cluster scope, so we cannot have conflicting versions of it in the same cluster. So, ah. the thing is, having it managed by Argo is not too friendly for development. Like waiting for, you know, having to send a PR to just deploy a new test version, like, yeah, yeah, I agree, agree. Um, uh, that is really awkward uh, to do that stuff. But um, yes, uh, you're right. But um, uh, I, I don't know. Um, Argo CD that uh, good. But uh, can can't I disable it doing the synchronization and then really use OC to deploy a new version of the pipeline spec or something? Yes. You can do that. The only issue here is uh, with the operator. Uh, I think more important question would be how fast are we deploying the operator? Uh, so it's uh, more on the build and release, and then update on on the side of the side of uh, OpenShift. For other things, you can directly do OC apply. I mean, in the best case, uh, the operator turns very static, very fast, right? Because um, most of the magic is happening in the Tecton pipelines anyway. Well, there are things that are changing in the operator. See two lines below, like, uh, and I wouldn't discard more changes. So, yeah, absolutely right, but yeah. It's uh, so if if the build is right now manual in this operator, uh, you, I think uh, with privileges on that cluster, you can manually deploy it. Shouldn't be any harm. Uh, getting access to that cluster is a little tricky. It's just not on operate first. It also is on OS climate folks. So if someone wants an access, you have to contact teams and have them approve that those uh, permissions. So if someone needs a cluster admin privileges, that's not easy to get. Uh, let's um, let's shoot for an integration test uh, environment managed by our Argo CD. So we're going to deploy an operator on a cluster scope. Yeah which is doing the operator part. But we should be able to manually, basically out of band of uh, Argo City, update the pipeline files. Because I'm pretty sure that the next iterate or the next big step will be working on tasks and stuff like that. Um, if updating the operator takes us a day or two, yeah, too bad. But if we are able to test out the tasks in a cluster context by OC apply a new Tecton task file, that is valuable from my point of view. 
but um, I, I still agree, uh, Pep, uh, the, the operator itself will change. Um, that is uh, pretty much for sure. Um, but can't we freeze it right now? For at least for the next week or two and, and focus on the Tecton pipelines? OK, well, mm, maybe. <laughs> there is a PR, a draft PR about some changes to the operator, adding the Jupiter Hub build pipeline to it. We can freeze it after this merges. Pipelines can go like separately. Even during my meteor build, uh, the operator was being developed a little different, and then the pipelines, and then both of them got added. So the what what gets added into operator is the pipeline run resource. Rest of the things anyway stays uh, like up obsolete from that. So uh, we can have that same flow. And pipeline run only has the parameters which go into the pipeline, nothing else. So they are anyway separated. So you don't need to freeze the whole operator just for development of any of the pipelines. They're anyway different. Well, and by the way, uh the kind local cluster works to the to iterate on the on the operator development it's just the moment you run pipelines that use image streams then you don't work so that's fine i mean if we yeah okay. yeah exactly um so the kind cluster is pretty much to to get this the contract between user interface and backend straight not for many more things Mm -hmm. mm. Let's see. I just saw Max, you had a proposal uh, versions of the CRD. Uh, well, the thing is that once the once the API is a bit more stable, maybe. But right now, it's I don't know how do you feel, but I think it's changing a bit too much to. Yeah, we are version one alpha one, but um, because there is nothing prior to this, let's <laughs> say. Otherwise, I, I think it's still too early to uh, to have a version of the API. No. Any other thoughts? So we will. Uh, I'll also look into deploying these things into OS Climate. Hopefully, that will help. Uh, apart from that, any other questions regarding this? Pep, okay. uh, do you want to talk about these two bits? And just two quick updates. The, well, actually, the second one is more Christoph uh, updated the uh, CDR CRD. Um, sorry, Fix that typo. Uh, okay. I think it looks better now. And the, the other thing is, I'm currently working on um, having the Meteor Jupiter Hub build pipeline be driven by the operator. It's there's a draft PR. It actually works, except that in my test cluster, it ran out of resources and I couldn't finish the pipeline build. So. Anyway, mm, but I think that um, that PR is a good example, right? Because um, it is not changing the interface, right? The the custom resource definition is still the same, isn't it? Yes. It's light change. I added because I I I added oh, yeah. The, yeah. I see it. The, you you added the reference to the Git repository. Yeah. Okay, fair. Um, so the interface changed a little bit. The operator itself changed a little bit because we need to put more parameters into the pipeline run. What what uh, Hashad just explained. That's basically the only thing we are doing. So that change, that PR would require us to basically manually build the operator container image and deploy it to the cluster. That would be 
maybe a manual build, maybe an automated build, but it would be Argo CD job because we need cluster uh, admin to deploy a new version of the operator and blah, 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 blah. That would take a little bit longer. But the second part that you just described, Pep, the, the well, the pipeline simply does not build because running out of resources. That is something that we could do in that environment, updating yeah. stuff, updating resources, blah, 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 by OC applying the, the Tekton files, right? Mm -hmm. Let, let's let's make that our 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 process for now and see see how it works out. If we figure out that that's broken, if, so if we figure out next week it's completely broken and doesn't give us any any performance or any any progress, any velocity, and then we're gonna rethink it. But okay. it still feels better than having a code ready container or the OpenShift local on your laptop eating every every memory that is in the laptop. Sounds good. Anything else? Awesome. Then that's about it. I don't think any, there are any more topics for today. Uh, if nothing else, then we can call it the meeting. Yes. Thanks all. For Thanks all. See you in the chat. See you later. Bye. Bye bye. bye.